everyone, it's Tim, and today I'm going to do a little video on oximeters and how to use them to identify food allergies and sensitivities, but also to identify the substances food allergies, or sorry, foods, supplements, substances in which your body will thrive upon. Um, it's a bit to do with the COCA pulse testing method uh, to identify allergies which is where they simply took the pulse. These cheap little oximeters, which can be purchased on eBay, Amazon, 20 to $30, very inexpensive, sometimes $15 for you guys in the United States. Um, worth their weight in gold when you want to identify allergies, especially in your children. Uh, very simple and easy method to use and very, very accurate. The, me the meter itself doesn't have to be accurate. That's why you don't have to worry about the price of the meter. Um, the cheaper you can get, pick one up, the better. Um, because if you break it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is that the increase and decrease is accurate. Not that the, the accurate number. So we're seeing here that the heart rate is 80. The oxygen saturation is 99. Maybe they're ox the oxygen saturation of the person's hand, which is shown here, is really only 97. It doesn't matter. All that matters is to see what the movement is when exposure to a substance, food, supplement is, occurs. Sorry. So, uh, on this particular meter, these are just the cheap ones. They clip onto the end of your finger. Uh, of course, this side up uh, to the fingernail. No fingernail polish on, folks. If you do, it won't work. And we're going to, again, this one, oxygen is at the top, O2, heart rate is at the bottom. Now, these can flip, just whatever meter you buy, know where the heart rate is. And that's what you're going to want to follow and track. So in this particular instance, we're using 80 as a baseline. So the person has sat still, you're going to have them sit still or lie still. And if it's yourself, you'll probably, you'll have to sit still. Sit at the table. Line up your food supplements or whatever substances you want to test in very close proximity because you want to move as little as possible. You're going to sit still for about two or three minutes. Make sure that the heart rate normalizes and pretty, sits pretty still at around whatever number. Whatever number it is. So just sit still. Then you're going to take a substance and you're going to place your hand upon it or place it in your hand. Have somebody else place it in your hand in an ideal world. But if you can't, you can still place your hand upon it, moving as little as possible. And what we're going to watch is to see where the heart rate number goes. If the heart rate increases by three beats per minute, then we're thinking we're at least three beats per minute. We're talking about a sensitivity, a food supplement, whatever, a substance sensitivity. Because what has occurred here is that We've tricked the body into believing that it is exposed to this substance, and as a result, if there's a sensitivity or allergy, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, the cells of the body will slow down. As those cells slow down, the organs now need to pick up the slack, and they need to increase uh, their work and productivity. Thus, the heart rate, the heart will beat at a greater rate of greater speed or more beats per minute. So. In, in this case, we're, in this example, sorry, we're showing something where there's a sensitivity, increase three beats per minute. This will not go to 83 and stay there. The body will self-regulate and bring it back down. So you're going to have to watch the monitor closely and see what occurs. So now if we're going to expose it to another substance and it's a full-blown allergy, it will be at least 85 beats per minute. And at 85 beats per minute or more, we're talking about an allergy. The higher the increase of the number of beats per minute, the more severe the allergy. Because this can be jump 15 beats per minute. If it does, you've got a pretty severe allergy. Uh, or, well, no, it's full-blown allergy. Pretty severe allergy, and you really want to stay away from that substance. This is, what I've just shown you is the COCA pulse testing method. That's what they identify in that you can use the pulse 
to identify when there's an allergy because the pulse will increase. And dependent upon how much the pulse increases, it will determine whether it's a sensitivity or a full-blown allergy. That's what I just shown you, but I've shown you a quicker, easier, more visual way to identify that. However, it works the same way in the opposite because when you trick the body and you expose it to something that the body will thrive upon, in the same manner, whether you touch it or you place it in their hand, the cells will increase activity because they're free, they're free to go. There's no need to preserve energy anymore to fight the foreign invader, which is the allergy or sensitivity. They can run rampant and the body and the immune system actually is what provokes the cells to increase their activity. When that occurs, the actual organs, the muscles of the organs do not have to work as hard. And the, in this case, the heart rate will drop. So if you have a food in which your body is perfectly okay with, and you expose it, you expose the body to it, whether you place it in the hand or you touch it again, remember, you need to move as little as possible. I'm not, at the end, I'll talk a very little bit about this, and we're just about to the end. Um, so here we go. We, we've dropped three beats per, mi per minute from the baseline of 80 beats per minute, which was the normal in this example. So we know the body's okay with it. Again, it's only going to drop to 77, and it's going to come back up, and it's going to normalize it at 80 again. Uh, but the, trust me, the heart is working much harder in order to accomplish this than if all the cells were firing properly. If there's a food that the body, or a substance, uh, say it's vitamin D, okay? There's a, there's a good example. We'll just vitamin C, whatever. Uh, and you get a thousand milligram vitamin C. And you put that in the, in the person's hand or you just move your fingers over, touch the vitamin C, and it drops to 75 beats per minute. So we know the body is going to thrive on this vitamin C. But now we want to identify and use the same thing. So again, the, the more it drops, the more the body needs that substance. And if you want to identify dosage, take a few... Uh, different amounts of vitamin C and lay them out. Uh, four tablets, five tablets, however many. Touch that many tablets. Make sure your skin is in contact with four tablets and three tablets, two tablets, one tablet, and watch which of those numbers, which of which of those, yeah, not number of uh, tablets, vitamin C tablets, capsules, whatever, uh, give you the highest, or sorry, the the greatest drop in heart rate. Whichever one does, that is exactly what your body wants and will thrive upon. This is what I call reverse coca pulse te testing method. Uh, not something that's really considered, but it works extremely well. Remember, it's going to drop and then it's going to recover. The body's going to self-regulate. It's going to come back. It's just going to work harder, not faster anymore. So it's, it's, part, it's part of the process of rebalancing heart rate after an exposure to a substance in which the body will either thrive upon or whether it opposes it. So if you're going to test a child, the best thing to do is to lay them on a couch or sofa, lay them on a bed, put the pulse, the pulse meter, SpO2 meter, oximeter, whatever you want to call it, on their finger, make sure it's visible. Opposite hand is going to be laid down, palm up, and you're going to place a different substance there, and place, or, or, or a different amount of, of uh, supplement tablet, tablets, capsules. Pay attention to the meter. Watch where it goes, up or down. <coughs> Excuse me. Up or down, you'll know whether their body will thrive upon it or whether their body opposes it. If that heart rate's going up, folks, stay away from that food or supplement or substance. You can do this with anything from your uh, laundry detergent, fabric softener, uh, any, anything you want, and know what the body's actual response to it will be. When it comes to, again, dosing tablets with a child, make sure they stay as still as possible. And before you begin, sit or lay as still as possible until you begin the testing. That will help normalize the heart rate, 
you'll get a baseline. In this case, we use the 80, the example of 80 beats per minute, just because it was a nice, easy round number, up or down. Don't use the, the heart rate numbers here as what's good or bad. This is just an easy example to use. Uh, so that's what we've got. Up, bad. If the, sorry, if the heart rate goes up, it's bad. If it goes down, your body wants it and will thrive upon it. You can use that for your supplements. Again, your detergents, hygiene products, and any environmental product. Uh, give it a try. Work with it. It's something cheap, easy to do, and very, very effective, as you'll find out. For those of you who know what your allergies or sensitivities are, try it. Your body won't lie to you. Bye-bye.